Buying a home is the best investment you can make. I'm Rosanna Scotto. Just ask David Walentis. Some people call him the king of Dumbo. A $12 million investment turned him into a multi-billionaire. I was a dumb and dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, extreme makeover. Meet the queen of staging. Guys, roll the carpet. Is this the secret to selling a multi-million dollar apartment? But first, at home and at work, with fashion icon Donna Karen and her daughter, restaurateur Gabby Karen De Felice. Does that look fabulous? I feel like one of the Karen sisters. Thank you, Donna. This mother and daughter team sharing food and lifestyle under one roof on the east end of Long Island. The mother-daughter collaboration in Sag Harbor. Urban Zen meets Tuto. Is it Tuto meets Urban Zen? Urban Zen meets Tuto. I think that's, that's very sweet. Question. That's very sweet. No, I think we're changing the name. Urban Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally Urban Chaos. No. It really is everything you want in life. You want to eat, you want to dress, you want to go out, you want to shop. You know, our ADD is really bad right now. <laughs> This place is really an extension of your home. I mean, it is our home. Whose idea was it to collaborate together, mother and daughter? We have different theories of thought. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 she likes to remember what she wants to remember <laughs> and doesn't remember what I she wants. I can't believe she said that. <laughs> Could I sort of get you a little bit more zen? Would you mind? <laughs> How do I say no to Donna Karen? How do I say no to Donna Karen? Okay, Come on. let's do it. Come on. Let's go, Donna. Let's go shop. Donna has done Rose me Gabby. over. Oh my God, Roseanne, you look amazing. What do you think, Donna? Honey, this what do you think? I love it. Did you feel that the dress was wearing the dress me? dress was wearing you. You didn't come through. Now I see you. Before I was seeing the blues and the prints and the blah, 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 and all those colors. You know, it's this thing that walks out. So for me, it's who you are. You should never have to think about what you're wearing. Mm. It should be your soul. But you know what it is? You have to feel it. How does that feel against your body? It feels good. I feel like cozy. Yeah. Look how gorgeous that looks with your hair you like under the black. You're so like a beautiful. different person, honey. Let me say, oh, I like this. Does that look fabulous? I feel like one of the Karen sisters. Thank you, Donna. You know, Gabby and I live next door to each other, too. Isn't that nice? <laughs> So here we go. It's true, the family that works together, lives together, stays together. Let's go inside their oasis on the bay. This is amazing. How would you describe this besides perfect? A large tree house. <laughs> wow. The den in the kitchen is where everyone hangs out. This is where the magic happens. She feeds us and my family. I don't want her to leave. This I is, love it. This, this is, is how we spend our time. Your mother-in-law? My mother-in-law. She's fantastic. We so, nah, because so, it's grandma in Italian. So tell me about what you wanted to create in your home. I'm very aesthetic, and I grew up with, a, you know, a mother being a designer and a father being an artist. I feel like everything I see has to be pretty. So it was a light palette. It was linens. It was, you know, soft tones. I don't need air conditioning with this breeze. It's like my favorite. This deck is like a runway. <laughs> my husband's a pilot, so I had to do something that was in lieu of what he enjoys. That's so funny. And your mother, the catwalk. <laughs> I mean. And the catwalk. This is so serene out here, you know? This is nice. You can walk right to your mom's house. Yes. And she can walk to yours. Yes, she comes a lot. <laughs> Announced or unannounced? I announced my mother never. <laughs> well, that was a very short walk to your mom's house. I think, uh, Gabby, you need to like. <laughs>
You know what they say about fences? They make good neighbors. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a true compound, right? It is. It's As I take from her, she takes from me. I used to steal her clothing when I was young, and now it's payback time. <laughs> so go. she takes all my furniture to sell in her store. We're very tonal. I like, like this. Fall. We're very fall. I like we this. match. I like we this. live next door to each other. We match. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> this one goes through. Wait, he's in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his art. Oh, okay. Oh, that yes. is awesome. I take these shoes for Gabby. I really want them. Sure. I need them there. Sure. No, somebody's going to want to buy it. wants them. I know. Yeah. I know. They all want to buy it. She wants to sell everything in your house. <laughs> so she takes everything Wait, in my house to sell. She takes, she she takes, takes it. She takes it. We've sold out, so she takes stuff from my house. Says I put cameras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I need to see. see? No, 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 no. You don't take my basket. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> She's so funny. She, watch her. I think you better. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better shake her down before oh my she leaves. See, there you go. She wow. takes all my things. It's terrible. You come back, half the stuff is missing. I know, it drives my husband crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you and your mom. You know, I see that, like, it reminds me of my mother, too. Yeah. Like the dynamic, you know? The dynamic is changing a little bit. Yes, yes. She, she says I've become her mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling her what to do. I, I tease her. But do they, they don't listen, though, right? They don't listen. I know. <laughs> Same with my mom. <laughs> and here's our executive oh, chef, oh, Agostino, oh, from oh, Southern oh, Italy. Oh, beautiful. Cheers. Thank you so much for letting me in your home and your oh, beautiful God. store and restaurant. Coming up. By the end of the 1800s, Brooklyn was the fourth largest industrial city in the United States. The Brooklyn waterfront then. And now. The history of Dumbo and the man who had the vision to turn it around. And later. And there's some sexiness to the velvets that they use. Tell grandma to take the plastic cover off. This furniture is designed by Fendi and Bentley. Welcome back. We're on the rooftop of the One Hotel in Brooklyn, along the riverfront in the shadow of the Brooklyn Bridge. Growing up in Brooklyn, I remember coming to this area where there were abandoned buildings and little reason to visit. Not anymore. I'm with Nayeli Guillen from the Brooklyn Historical Society. In your neck of the woods, Dumbo. Where did we come up with that name anyway? Dumbo literally stands for down under the Manhattan Bridge. This bridge has been in this neighborhood since 1909. It really runs through the spine of Dumbo. But this neighborhood as a whole has been here several centuries and actually used to be very industrial. In the 19th century, from the 1850s really into the early 1900s, Dumbo was really a transportation and, and warehouse hub. By the end of the 1800s, Brooklyn was the fourth largest industrial city in the United States. Coming in from New York Bay, from Dumbo all the way down to Red Hook, there were these four and five story tall warehouses. Um, so ships would come in, they would dock at the wharves, and all um, different kinds of goods from around the world were brought into these warehouses. You've got coffee and tea, you had animal hides, um, cotton, and other textile products. When did this area become abandoned? It's really around the turn of the 19th century, the late 1800s and really in the early 1900s. A lot of the factories and manufacturers that had really made this a thriving industrial center started leaving. And when a lot of this infrastructure was built along the riverfront, the Brooklyn Bridge down the way, which opened in 1883, the Manhattan Bridge in 1909, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway in the 1940s, this neighborhood really got sort of bottlenecked and cut off from the rest of Brooklyn. I remember coming down to the River Cafe yeah. in the late 1970s. <laughs> and it was like its own little thing. Like, yeah. it was the only thing that was alive down here. Absolutely. Um, that came in in the 70s, which is really when this neighborhood took on a new life. So David Valentis, Dumbo, what attracted you to this area? It's a spectacular neighborhood. This was 40 years ago. I turned 40. And I asked one of the flaky kids, you know, Soho, Noho, what's next? And he said, Dumbo. I said, where the hell is Dumbo? So I, I came over here, the River Cafe had just opened. 
I had lunch. I walked around the neighborhood and I said, wow, what a great neighborhood. What was here? Well, the buildings were all here, interestingly, um, but they were mostly vacant or or tertiary kind of manufacturing, record storage, lots of manufacturers. Nobody wanted them. So I bought two million square feet for $12 million, six dollars a foot. <laughs> and, and I was the dumb and dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? And now you can't but, even buy an apartment. Right, now I'm a genius. So we're just a few feet from Jane's Carousel, which is a big attraction. Big attraction, and it's a, a big sort of family-friendly space, this Empire Fulton Ferry Park. By the way, this area is bustling. Yeah. You have hotels, condominiums, restaurants, and now the Soho Dumbo House, right. which is like <laughs> the ultimate in chic Acronym. and trending, right? These buildings were all here. Right. They were just vacant, uh, unkempt, nobody wanted them. Uh, the streets were here. But it was empty. It was empty, but, but the bridges were here, the river was here, the subways were here. The infrastructure was all here. Nobody had a vision for Brooklyn. Brooklyn, 40 years ago, people were leaving Brooklyn, right? Everybody that grew up in Brooklyn wanted to move to the Long city. Island, the city, right. get out of there. And today, their children only want to live in Brooklyn. <laughs> When you look back at your, your legacy, did you ever imagine this kind of community never, being created? Never, never. I mean, who, who's ever built a, a whole neighborhood in the middle of New York City by themselves? I mean, it's not like we had partners or we were rich. It's my 50th anniversary. It started 50 years ago. I turned 30. I quit my job. I took my wife back to her mother. And I tried to borrow ten thousand dollars from Citibank. I was and thirty years old, so now I'm going to be I'm going to be eighty on Monday. I've had a great trip. And I think you're. <laughs> I want to be a billionaire <laughs> so freaking bad. Are you? More. <laughs>
can they buy everything that you've done? Oh yeah, and oftentimes they do. The higher the price point usually is the more uh, frequently that they buy it furnished. We always use modular furniture because it can fit in any apartment when we move from place to place. Mm -hmm. It makes it very easy. Now what will you do with the windows? Will you just leave them? I mean, the view is what's going to sell this apartment, so we don't we don't want to compete with that. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll put floor-to-ceiling shears just to frame the view so that your eye really goes to that and it makes it more dramatic. So how much does it cost to, like, stage an apartment? Well, it's all different. It depends on the size, but typically it's about 1%-ish of the sale price. For this apartment, that's a cool $200,000 just in furniture. Just a few blocks away, Cheryl's not the only one in the staging game. Fendi Casa and Bentley furnishing the spectacular $75 million penthouse. Meet Shauna Bender. She owns Design Studio 15. For us, our design process is we put everything into 3D. So when we're looking at scale and scope and space and volume of spaces, that um, furniture is taking on an architectural tone of its own. We're in one of the penthouse rooms um, where we've used Fendi and a combination of Bentley furniture that has the unique finishes of their signature blue cobalt velvets and light burl woods and suedes and leathers. A lot of people don't know that Bentley makes furniture, so most people are very familiar with Fendi Casa. So we wanted to introduce clients and prospective buyers to a new realm of luxury they may not have been used to before. There's some sexiness to the velvets that they use. Staging to sell an apartment this grand topping out between $1 million and $2 million. Next. Valentino came to me and he said, Adam, I, I, I'm not sure we're in the right apartment. He physically sat down on the toilet and started motioning to the shape of the bowl. This is Real Estate Confidential. A celebrity mishap, a strange roommate request, and a toilet bowl conundrum. It's all in this edition of Real Estate Confidential. Hi, I'm Adam Taylor with Bond, New York. I have a case of, I guess, mistaken identity. I was in the lobby of one of the buildings. I had an exclusive in, and in walked these four impeccably dressed gentlemen. They went over to the doorman and told him that their broker was running late, um, and the lobby attendant assumed that they were there to see the apartment that I was showing so he introduced me to them and as soon as they turned around I recognized that one of them was Valentino the famous Italian designer so I took them up on the elevator and showed them the apartment walked them through the living room the bedrooms the kitchen the two beautiful terraces I noticed that they seemed a little confused and and then Valentino came to me and he said Adam I, I, I I'm not sure we're in the right apartment and then I realized that they weren't there to see my apartment they were there to see the penthouse above hi I'm Allison Caramonte with Warburg Realty one of the oddest things I've learned on the job is about toilets I was showing an apartment and a man dragged me to the master bathroom because he said if this bathroom doesn't have an elongated toilet I'm not interested. So he physically sat down on the toilet and started motioning to the shape of the bowl. At this point, I was a little disturbed and a little scared, and the showing ended. It wasn't until six months later when I was redoing my own apartment and I was out toilet shopping with my contractor that I got the full scoop on what an elongated toilet bowl is. Let's just say, if you're a man, you know, and you want one. Now, whenever I'm showing apartments that do have elongated toilet bowls, I point them out, and men smile knowingly, and women look at me like I have 10 heads. Hi, my name is Mark Mortza with the Corkman Group. So, um, like everybody in this industry, we also have our own uh, set of particular clients. So we had one woman that uh, fell in love with a single family home that we had. She's single, like said that to me like 16 times, and I'm like, got it perfect house for if you're single amazing neighborhood there's bars there's commutes and everything else and she's like oh you know it would be really, really great if I had somebody to you know share some of these expenses with 
or you know it's like a whole big house for just like a single woman I'm like well I hope you're both entertained there's a huge backyard barbecue uh, yeah she's like yeah well uh, I'll definitely invite the realtor to the barbecue I'm like great she's like uh, and then she kept on going with this and uh, I knew where it was going so I was just kind of like taking steps back and uh, she's like uh, you ever had a roommate I'm like uh, not since college and uh, she's like well it'd be great if you were my roommate I politely declined her offer to be her roommate there is plenty of competition in the real estate world just remember a great investment can bring happiness and priceless memories until the next time I'm Rosanna Scotto